Hello, Anthony. Hello, Claudine. There's a travel ban that is not really in the headlines, yep. but it's a big deal. That's right. And it actually could ban U.S. citizens from flying in the U.S. This yeah. has nothing to do with foreigners. It has nothing to do and nothing to do with you being a terrorist risk or any sort of risk. And it's a little odd how it all works out. But the, but the end result is there is absolutely a travel ban for certain U.S. citizens flying domestically. Mm -hmm. Absolutely true. It's a little crazy how it all sets up. Uh, so maybe I should, we should explain a little bit of how it sets up here. Yes. So the first thing that the, the first uh, thing in place is that there's a thing called Real ID. Okay, Real ID is a, is a federal law that says in order for an ID to be accepted um, as identification by the, the TSA, it mm -hmm. has to meet these certain requirements. The federal government felt that some states were lax on giving IDs and without people actually being U.S. persons. Right. So the real ID requires you to show up um, with other ways to verify your ID, such as your birth certificate, um, your Social Security card. There's a few ways to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and for myself, the last time I went to get my license renewed, I saw the license renewal say, oh, if you want a real ID, have your birth certificate with you. I was thinking, well, I'm here. I don't really care because I have a passport. I don't need it. I'll just use my passport whenever I need a real ID uh, to use to use if I'm flying internationally or if when it does switch domestically mm -hmm. to that requirement. So I didn't bother. And I think a lot of people, if you're in a state that that has real ID, now a lot of states have this. They they have met the requirements. If you go to the the motor vehicle department, you can get a real ID. It might not automatically become a real ID depending on what you originally got your license with, but you can at least get one. And in Connecticut, if you have to go back to get one, it's a painful, painful time. We have a world famous DMV that's made Reddit um, for being absolutely terrible. So it is something that I'll probably avoid. Um, it's just easier to get a passport. But there are some states that don't have a real ID in place. Mm -hmm. um, and the list of those, uh, we know Kentucky is one. Um, and where's so Maine? Mm -hmm. Where's South our, Carolina. South Carolina. Do you have a Pennsylvania? list? Pennsylvania. Yep. No, someone that sent me a document. <laughs> where did that, that document? That was unreadable. It was unreadable. Oh, you didn't, weren't able to look that document? I have yeah. that somewhere. <laughs> you know, there's this IRS medic page. You should load it with great information. I'll go there to find the states that it is. <laughs> so now the second part of this mm -hmm. is the IRS passed a law. Actually, it passed in 2015, but it takes the IRS so long to sort of get their pants pulled up yep. that it's uh, going to go into effect in 2017. The law states that if you are a seriously delinquent taxpayer, yep. quote unquote, your passport can be revoked or denied. So let's say you are one of these people that has your passport revoked or denied and you're in one of these states where you need a real ID, that technically means you could be banned from flying? Is that correct? That is correct. You will be turned around. You can So even in. if you're traveling from Maine to Chicago, mm -hmm. you're not going outside the United States. Well, they that's a bad example because the airspace goes over Canada. Bad example. Sorry, I'm an <laughs> aviation buff. Maine to Connecticut. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. You technically could be banned from flying. Yes. Yeah. You, they'll turn you around. Yeah. You can't get in there. So the list is Kentucky, Maine, Minnesota, Missouri, Montana, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, Washington State. Yep. Now, if they do change and allow a real ID, then you'll be able to fly. And, you know, I could hear a lot of the, you know, the people criticizing this already to say, you know, well, if people can't get their act together and pay their taxes, well, you know what? tough. And I guess I understand it. You know, if you're paying taxes year after year, nobody wants to, mm -hmm. right? And I would say, well, there's situations you might not be aware of where somebody got into a situation maybe because of a bad business partner, a spouse that was a little nutty, um, sometimes bad tax advice. And yes, you know what? And here's the other thing too. People have some problems. People have problems that, that, that destroy themselves, alcoholism, gambling, there's a whole bunch of people with problems. And this is what I've learned over the years is that there's a there's some people who you can help with the tax problem. They come in like, yep, I'm ready to resolve this. And you're able to help them out and go on their way. And it's over with. Mm -hmm. There's other people. They need something else. They need, yes, they have a tax problem. But there's a larger symptom of something ongoing larger that you know, would be some form of mental illness. And they can't 
function correctly, the, the whole that they will actually shut down when you talk about taxes. They actually cannot resolve it. It, it, is, it is a true condition that the IRS causes or they can't, they, they can't possibly deal with it. They mm -hmm. don't have the tools to function. We all have our bias that we think people are like us. Like, oh, no, you should just deal with it. You know what? No one wants to deal with it. Just deal with it. I'm telling you, these people can't deal with it. And so with this law that takes away your passport, if you think about it, you're just saying, well, there's a whole class of people. Yeah, they might be, you know, well, I mean, drags. We, but, well, not know. even. We have attorneys that come into us. Yeah. We have IRS employees uh, that are yeah. our clients that don't pay their taxes. Yeah. So, And there's, you know, usually there's a solution for every case. Mm -hmm. there, usually there is. But sometimes that solution isn't quite workable. You're really looking at it. You've come to the edge. You're like, this isn't going to work. What the IRS is looking for is just far too much. And, or what they're looking for is a fixed amount that it does not account for the seasonal flows of someone's cash flow. The mm -hmm. IRS won't take a payment arrangement like, hey, you know, I'll pay you this much when the month for my good months. Give me, this, give me the winter off right. and I'll pay back up. No. They say, no, you pay us the same amount every month. Like, that's the way businesses are. And, it's, and it just sort of, that, that's another thing that infuriates me. You guys are so out of touch because they have their bias. Well, we get a check. Every, you know, we get our government check deposited, direct deposited. So you just pay a monthly bill. You have a monthly budget. Right. But for some people, they can't have a monthly budget and they can't, you know, find a way to meet their budget, work, you know, uh, meld with the IRS. That's what we try to do a lot. You know, we'll do that a lot with appeals to try to get them to see the reality of the situation. Um, but it's not something that's guaranteed all the time. It's not something every practitioner is able to do for their clients so that you can have somebody who is trying to solve a tax problem who can't. You can have somebody who can't solve a tax problem. Mm -hmm. Either way, you, you, you have a law that's banning people from traveling within the U.S. So The taxpayer advocate has already put out a statement about this, thinking it's not the best idea. They don't like the way that uh, taxpayers are going to be um, told about this, and they also are saying it might be unconstitutional. I do wonder about the, the constitutionality of it. I mean, I would say it's not, just because on principle, that this is a fundamental right that somebody has. And you're also taking away someone's fundamental right to, to interstate travel, mm -hmm. you, which you're, you're effectively doing. And I'm just thinking of this, and I think we all could probably think of an example of somebody, um, maybe you, know, so you have a grandmother uh, who's aging and you know, might be you know, sort of nearing the end, and, you know, maybe it's your uncle, maybe it's your aunt. Oh, they're a nice person, but they have problems. You know, they have problems. Well, you know, the mom's dying. Okay, I got to go fly out to see my dying mom. And this person just doesn't have the resources to help themselves. And by that, I mean they don't have the communi communication skills or the, the understanding to see this is how I can fix the problem. They just don't see it. And so now you're going to deny this person, I mean, really, that's what, that, I mean, it, it's not really all that far-fetched. That This is a situation that I can imagine. Who knows what I'm not imagining? That you are really, like, this is so important to get this, these taxes from people in this complicated system that nobody in the world understands, that you can't understand, and you're putting the same responsibility for compliance on people who simply don't have a mental capacity and assuming they have a mental capacity, they might not have the emotional capacity to deal with it. And that's the truth. I almost think the, the emotional capacity is, is bigger. From, from the people that contact us, they're smart friggin' people. Yeah. And they got into a bad situation, and now they are scared to death, and they don't know what to do. And this doesn't make it easier. No. Because you're like, oh, you know, just piling another piece of fear on there doesn't make it easier. It makes people more paralyzed. Right. Now it comes a situation like, I, I guess it's like, well, I guess I'll be driving. Right. Until the IRS takes away your life, you know, or, well, they're going to take away your license next. They said they would never do that. Right. Anthony. The IRS. Right. Never. And now, and, you know, the, the, the IRS scam calls are out there where people are calling, posing as the IRS. They're saying, we're going to take your away your, your driver's license. And people and, believe them. And, right. And it's in the IRS. Why shouldn't they? And the IRS news Twitter accounts like the IRS would never do that. But you'll take away someone's passport. But 10 years ago, I bet if they had Twitter, they would have said, we would never take away your passport. You're never, we'll never insane. impede on your right to travel anywhere. And here it is. Yep. This is what it is. And this is all something, you know, the IRS did not pass this law. The IRS did not pass a law that, that, that will take away your passport. Mm -hmm. We could thank Congress for this. This was Congress who was convinced that, oh, yeah, you know, we can, <laughs> we can take that Constitution, shred it a little bit because there's going to be some revenue in there. And, of course, the revenue is never going to show up. It's not there because you're dealing with people you aren't going to collect anything from anyway. That is the thing. When someone owes a tax debt and the tax debt is not paid in two years, the IRS knows full well the chances of them getting full payment are none. You're not. 
So that's why they offer the, you know, there's the offer and compromise because they know if they haven't paid us yet, maybe we, we ain't gotta get, get it. Something. So let's get something and then we'll pitch it as it's a, uh, as we're being good guys. But no, they're, do, they're doing it because it's in their best interest to take an offer because it's more than they would get through their normal collection methods. Yep. So if you're concerned about your passport, if you have a tax issue, don't hesitate to contact, contact us. I think this is great for TTD, a total tax diagnosis. Yeah. We have a service that's a flat fee, yep. and basically it tells you how much the IRS thinks you owe them. So you'll know if you're over that $50,000 yep. threshold or not with penalties and interest. Well, what also what we do is we give you a roadmap of everything you need to do. So some cases, you know, who, I mean, look, this stuff is a mess. And we, yeah, we do talk to a lot of smart people every day, a lot of entrepreneurs, and it's a mess. They can't deal with it. They don't want to deal with it. It's so hard. And it's just something that you, and it's just like, it's like quitting smoking. Today, you don't have to quit smoking, right? You don't have to today. Well, maybe tomorrow I'll do it. Maybe I'll tomorrow. And with the tax problem, you don't really have to address it today. Until you have to. Right. Until you have to, until maybe you're there um, and you're, you know, you're trying to, you know, you're trying to go see your, your mother who's not doing so well. And someone's turning you around and you're thinking, okay, how fast can Amtrak get me there? Not real fast. Um, that's the answer. So that's maybe where you want to do it. Well, that, that might be a little bit too late. So this would be a good time to get to it now. And so, yeah, our total tax diagnosis will give you, you know, some cases are big, some cases are small. Maybe you have a small case. And sometimes that happens where a lot of times someone will call, I have a huge tax problem that can't be solved. And we take a look at it and say, okay, file it's this return that and that yeah. return, first time penalty abatement, and you're out the door here. Pay this a month and you're done. Yeah. And uh, people really, really love it. And we love doing it too because it sort of removes a lot of the fog and the uncertainty that people have. Um, yeah, taxes are scary. Yeah. All right, so give us a call if you need any assistance, 888-727-8796, or email us info at irismedic.com. Thanks so much for watching. You can like and comment below and subscribe to our channel for more awesome tax updates.